Good morning, folks. We've got an excellent article today on Iceland volcanic activity, one on geomagnetic impact to civil aviation incidents, and twin studies on the impact of the sun to clouds. But we also have solar activity, so let's begin with the last 24 hours on our star. No big flares, but a filament did destabilize on the north a few hours ago. There are plenty of plasma filaments on the sun at the moment, and they are all under eruption watch. You may have caught which filament collapsed, but we will show it again. It's the one on the northern hemisphere, just right of central longitudes, and so we do expect to see a faint CME on coronagraphs, which happily are up to date this morning. This appears to be a very minor, but Earth-directed eruption. No significant geomagnetic storms are expected from it, but an enhancement in the solar wind plasma should be expected from this over the weekend, probably on Sunday morning. We're moving on to Iceland. They are still awaiting the volcanic eruption in the wake of the ongoing earthquake swarm. Many are looking for more information, and this article, which is in your link list today, is a great one on the long cycle activity at Iceland. Highly recommended for anyone looking for more information on the volcanic activity there. Up next, we move on to civil aviation incidents. It's been a couple years since a similar study was performed, but this new one comes to the same conclusion as those in the past. That just as the geomagnetic impact to Earth seems to be the greatest during the declining phase of the sunspot cycle, so does the aircraft incident frequency, which also has an obvious modulation by just how many geomagnetic storms occur and how severe they are. Lastly, folks, an excellent one-two punch on what impacts the clouds. They do oblige the mainstream narrative a bit with the CO2 discussion as well, but the two papers make it clear. Solar activity affects the clouds, with perhaps the most critical point being a confirmation of previous studies asserting that surges in solar activity decrease low cloud fraction across the globe, which is an excellent aspect of why high solar activity heats the Earth, due to the drop in clouds reflecting sunlight back up into space. Golf clap for those two. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.